This instructional video will show you how to access and use the databases for HEBISD for the library. So we're going to start here with ClassLink and we're going to go to the icon here that says HEB Library Resources. That's where you want to go to get to all of our databases. Now here on this landing page are a few different things um, and this information that's here may change but what's up here at the top will not so what you can do is you can go to school libraries to see the library website or you can go to secondary resources and that will take you to all of the databases that we have now when you're here on campus you should not be asked for a password for most of them but if you are off campus then you may need to use this link to click and see what the passwords are for some of the databases. So we're going to start right here with World Book Student. This first row is all of our online encyclopedias. So World Book Student is probably the lower level um, encyclopedia that we have. And so as you can see, it goes right to whatever search it is that you want to do here. Um, there are a lot of other things that we have here in World Book. Um, you can browse by subjects if you're not sure which, what you want to research. Um, you can look at timelines. You can build your own um, works cited page using Citation Builder. Um, however, you probably won't need that with WorldBook because when you do a research topic, if you use a WorldBook resource, you will find that they all have At the bottom of every article, you will find that they have how to cite this article. And there is your citation that you can copy and paste. Here under the tools, the settings, you have the ability to change the view, um, saving it in different formats. You can save it directly to your Google Drive. You can share it by emailing it to yourself. You could obviously print it and it gets reformatted for you. You can do translations into a variety of different languages. Um, you can even change the text size. Um, one of the things I really like is that if you double click on a word that you are not um, familiar with, um, it will give you the definition. Here is the reading tool. Hurricane Katrina was one of the most it's not a great reading tool, but you can use that if that's going to make it easier for you. Um, clicking on media will give you some um, pictures and sometimes videos or recordings related to the article you're on. And if you click on related, then you get some other encyclopedia articles. And over here on the left, you even get some website suggestions and some magazine articles that are related to that topic. So when you search in WorldBook, you are getting more than just encyclopedia articles. On the far left right here, this is what we have um, that looks like a table of contents um, and it's hyperlinked. So you can go directly to the part of the article that you are interested in. Um, so that's really um, very helpful. Um, one thing I wanna say about the pictures that we have, you can cite these pictures. They give you the exact citation for the pictures. So if this is a picture you wanna use in a project, um, you can um, save it and cite it for use. So um, that is pretty much World Book for you. Um, if I close out this window, I still have the resources behind us. Um, so you can go to Britannica School that gives you all three levels of Britannica. You can go to the middle school or the high school. Um, so again, we have our search right up here. And this would show us how an article on the same topic is going to look a little bit different in Britannica than it does in WorldBook. Um, we have a lot of tools right here that are very similar to what WorldBook had, such as sending it to your Google Drive or emailing it. Um, you can print it. This is the citation icon. It just pops up right here, so that's pretty convenient. This is the translation icon. Um, they use Google Translate. This is the reading. 
um, and then this will make the article larger for you to read. Um, the thing I really like about Britannica that's different than World Book is this one, two, and three. These are reading levels. So if you, we're on the three, and if you find that is too hard or too much information, you can go down to a two with just a click like that, or even to a one. Um, over here at the top, we have our related stuff, our images and our videos. And again, these are all things that can be cited. And so they are able to be used in your projects. Related articles, but also websites. And sometimes, not in this particular example, sometimes you will have primary sources that are related. So that is Britannica. Down here in this next row, everything that's here is related to Gale Singage. Um, some of these are very similar. If you go to Gale Power Search, it's going to search all of the Gale databases. And that's the thing you have to understand about Gale is that it is a lot of different Gale databases. And this kind of shows you some of them. So if I hit um, select all, I do my search here. What I'm going to get this time is a great many more search results than I did with the World Book and with Britannica because those were just encyclopedia entries for the most part. Now we are looking at magazines, we're looking at academic journals, we have books. Gail is very, very strong in their reference books. There are also going to be news articles, a lot of images, some videos, and some audio. So we got a lot of results here. Um, and like I said, they're really good with reference. So the books is a strong place to go to. But as you can see, some of these are much more specialized than what you were getting with the encyclopedias. So you might want to know how to filter your search results. So you can do that over here on the right. You can filter by the publication date. Maybe you want the most recently written article or maybe you want um, one that was written when the event happened. Um, you can also go by subjects. So these are already um, pre prepared subjects that fit the topic. Um, so such as United States Congress, what were their actions as it relates to Hurricane Katrina? How did Hurricane Katrina affect global warming? So these are all topics that might fit what it is that you're actually looking for. So if I click on that, I'm only going to see 64 as opposed to 1,480 um, right now. Or document type, maybe you only want primary sources. Well, they do sometimes have primary sources. So I can click the checkbox and I can just look at those four. You always want the full text documents. If you don't have that clicked, then you'll just get an abstract and you will never get the whole article. So that's kind of frustrating. Um, publication title, if you know a particular um, journal or magazine that you're looking for, you can use this. Lexon measure, that's your reading level. Um, and then search within. This is good if you have like kind of two topics or you're looking for a specific time frame, um, you can search for that time frame within your topic or something like that. Um, so that's a very um, handy tool. What I really love about Gale, the most powerful thing that they have is this topic finder. So if I click start the topic finder, so this is a very visual way to look at all of the different related topics to what you have put in for your search. Um, so if I want to look specifically at, oh, well, let's say I am interested in how New York was affected by Hurricane Katrina. Well, here I have eight search results for it. And so it's giving me um, the, a little bit of information over here on it. Um, that's one of the things I haven't talked about yet is how to kind of sift through your search results to find the ones that you like um, because you don't necessarily want to just pick the very first one. Um, notice I now have two scroll bars um, so we can see this this is interesting Hurricane Katrina 15 years after so that's not talking about the immediate effects um, so that's a very specific topic for Hurricane Katrina um, so in a regular search not a topic finder I want to look at um, what are the elements that you're going to get in your search results so you have your title um, you have the source that it came from, okay? And of course, you know you're looking at a specific type of document. So this one is in magazines. Um, so we have our date, we have our length of the article and the reading level of the article. So all of that can help you. 
Um, plus we have a little bit, this is a byline because it's from a magazine, so that's a little bit helpful. It's not the complete thing. Um, but looking at these individual pieces can often help you decide, is this going to be what I'm looking for? Or no, let's look at the next one. Let's go to the next one. Go to the next page. Um, so that's also a tool you need to be able um, to utilize when you're doing your research. So oh, the, the thing to know about Gale Power Search is that it's searching all of the Gale things. Now these allow you to narrow it down. For example, high school. Let's say you want the higher level stuff. So if I search for Hurricane Katrina in the high school, we have fewer search results. Um, here's the content types. It's kind of broken out a little bit into more detail. Now we have critical essays. Um, we show primary sources up here. Uh, biographies is now an option. We have the same ways of filtering for the most part that we did in the other. Um, we still have our topic finder we can pull up. Um, and it gave me, it's going to default to reference, so that's nice. It's kind of like the encyclopedia. Start with the general overview of the topic, and from there you can go into subjects and narrow it down into topics like disaster relief. Um, these all, but I didn't go into an article and show you this, these all have um, citations for you. Um, so that's also a very handy thing to see. So that is right here under source citation, although there might be, oh yeah, right up here with the quotes. That's where you get the shortcut to the citation or it pulls up a window. Um, if I click send to, it's going to allow me to put it in my Google Drive or email it. We can also download it directly if you're using your own computer um, or print it. Um, getting the link is um, if you want to um, put it in a document online and whoever is looking at your document online can go to the link for it. Um, okay, so we have those things. They have the ability for you to highlight. Um, over here we have more like this and related articles. Then we have related subjects, which is very helpful if you are narrowing or widening your search. You can use these related subjects to see what else you can find on it. We also have the ability to translate, to change the font size, and to have it read to us. So we have a lot of the same basic features that the other databases have. Um, they all kind of look the same. You just have to know where to find these tools. So that's the Gale High School Edition. Getting a little bit more specific is Gale Opposing Viewpoints. And this one is very highly centered on debatable topics. Um, it's kind of interesting to look at browsing the issues. If you aren't sure what it is you want to research, then you can browse through these res resources. So let's say you want to maybe consider water pollution. Well, here is a little overview of it, but then down here they give you a little snapshot of all the kinds of resources that we have on water pollution. So it's all these different types, so it's like you did a search on water pollution. But they do add featured viewpoints. Now, here's the thing about the viewpoints. They're very polarized. They look at the issue from different sides. It's like a debate. People take one side, people take the other side, and they present both viewpoints, okay? Um, if you are preparing for a debate or if you're writing, writing a persuasive topic, this is a great place to find those types of arguments. Look, they even have statistics. Um, I have it all kind of broken down for you and it's a lot more visual. Um, so this is um, an interesting tool for that. But that's just through the browsing. Of course, you can search if you already know what your topic is going to be. Now, one of the things about Gale is that this is only the tip of the iceberg. Um, they have many more specialized um, databases. So if we click on the text quest button from the high school edition, um, you can go to um, all of the Gale databases um, down here at the bottom under exploring the um, TextQuest resources. You click on Gale and um, you can narrow it by what's applicable to the high school. Um, so we have Academic One File Chilton Library, which is um, really interesting. Um, one that's focused on literature, one for educators. Um, this environmental studies and health wellness are both um, specialized science, but then we also have a science only um, database. Um, the ebooks, the general one file is a little bit like the academic one file and a little bit like the high school edition. 
Um, they're very general. But we do have um, this Informe Academico, which is Spanish. We have one that's um, news, which is mostly newspa newspapers. And then, of course, we went through the opposing viewpoints. Um, the Gale literature is actually broken down into three or four different ones. Um, so you can select one of these and start filtering your resources by one of those broader topics. So I just want you to know that that is there. Going back to our page, um, we can now go down to the third line where we have ProQuest. Sears Discover um, is one that we've been, we've had for a little while, and so I included it on here. Um, however, I've learned since that this ProQuest is actually the one that is more um, high school in nature. So you may want to go straight there. I'm not sure if you're going to find the same uh, types of uh, resources in both or not. So here we have on our result, we got 4,000. Um, so it's a little bit of a smaller um, database. So here's the source types we're going to get. Scholarly journals, dissertations, um, newspapers and magazines, working papers, conference uh, reports, and book. Oh, there's more too. Um, blogs and podcasts and websites. Um, we didn't get that with Gail. Uh, trade journals. We get some government publications here, and then a little bit of audio and video. So um, that's what you can see. You can filter by that right here. You can also filter by your publication date right here. Um, here's a little more um, document type filtering based on the search results that we have. It tells you how many are of each kind. Uh, filtering by language. Those are obviously not translations. Um, and there's some more filters under here, uh, such as a specific database. Maybe you're looking for a specific person um, related to that topic. So um, that's some interesting uh, way to filter. Um, we get... I'll go ahead and choose this first one, which is a working paper. Uh, so that's an interesting um, type of resource. Uh, we um, have our citation uh, shortcut right here. So they do give you that. You can email it, you can print it, and there are some more options you can also save to Google Cloud here. Um, more, if you are building your site, your work cited in Noodle Tools or Easy Bib, you can export the citation there. Um, so that's kind of convenient. This one is only an abstract. This is why you always want to search for full text document. Um, this one's a chart. Uh, Sears Multimedia. So that's what we have in ProQuest. Um, Learn360 is a lot of videos. So um, if your teacher isn't giving you an assignment through here, this might be a place to come and look for something. If you are um, having trouble with um, a particular topic. So that's uh, some of the things that we have available in Learn360. Um, so hopefully that will also be helpful to you. Discovery Education is also videos. Um, we have to go to this one now. Through ClassLink, there is a Discovery Education shortcut that you may have to put on your ClassLink yourself. Um, and then you could search um, for a video to help you. Mostly this is something that a teacher, for example, would assign you and put up. So depending on your topic, it can have quite a bit of results um, that could be something that may help you. Um, there are a few things in addition to videos. So that's a little bit of what we have here in Discovery Education. Then we have Teen Tribune from Smithsonian, which is um, a lot of kind of current events. Um, you could go to your grade level. Mostly what we have here are articles that are great for current events or to get you thinking about things. 
Um, it's not necessarily a research tool. Um, it is a free resource, so do keep that in mind. Te teaching uh, books down here is all about books. So let's say, for example, your teacher has assigned you a long way down. You could go to the page for that book. And you would see there are a total of 64 resources. And this is the breakdown of the types of resources. Original resources means things that teachingbooks.net wrote. Um, whereas a lot of these are going to be um, things that they found um, on the internet and pulled together for you. So these are just general ones about Jason Reynolds, but then we have some interviews which may or may not be about the specific book long way down. Um, then we have some book guides, activities, and lessons, although I have learned these are not always specific to the individual book. Sometimes they're generic. We have some readings. We even have a trailer on this one, a vocabulary list, which could help you if you're reading that book, and information on awards. Um, so if you are maybe doing a, a lit circle um, and you can find a, a book guide um, or discussion questions here on the book that you're reading, um, that's something that you guys could use. Or um, one of the really fun things is trying to figure out how to pronounce the author's name. Hey, my name is Jason Reynolds. The easiest way to remember my name, or well, my first name, Jason, think of... Okay, that's enough of that. But it's kind of a fun little resource that they have there. Um, Learning Express is all about testing. So, for example, college admissions. Let's say you are preparing for your SAT. Here you are. We have a test preparation tutorial. We have a math practice ebook. You don't have to check out a physical book from the library. You can. You can look at the ebook. And then, of course, practice tests. Um, and then, of course, it's not just SAT. We have all kinds of different test prep things um, and things that are more than just test preps. And we even have stuff in Spanish. Um, so you could figure out what kind of career you're interested in. You could prepare for your GED, just all different kinds of um, testing and uh, real life resources here for you. And that's Learning Express. Um, and then Testing and Education Reference Center is very similar to that. It's just from a different resource. Um, so let's say you are a high school student, because you know you are, and you are preparing for a test. And it may be a college entrance exam. SAT prep sounds good. Oops, I think I went to previous. Okay, so we have an online course that you could go through. You could look at the prep guide, or you can go straight to practice tests and see how you do. Oh, look at this. You can do word of the day because guess what they're going to have? Vocabulary. Okay, so um, both of those are testing prep things. And then down here, these last two rows are pretty much all ebooks, which um, don't cover my topic today. Um, so those are our databases available, um, and that's how to get to them.